Quantum Eraser, also known as Questionable Education, has done it again. He doesn't understand the dip correction in celestial navigation, contradicts himself multiple times, and in the meantime has brought absolutely nothing to the table t to discredit the spherical Earth. He tries to argue that dip correction has no relation to anything else than the height of the ice, and therefore it is evidence that the world cannot be spherical. Sorry it's so big, I couldn't get it any smaller. <laughs> he starts off with showing part of the cover of a book and says, Sorry, it's so big, I couldn't get it any smaller. So, he didn't read the book. Well, let's see if we can show the cover in totality. There you go, here it is. Then he goes on. Introduction to Nautical Science by Carl A. Chase. This guy's a real knucklehead. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a few things, but let's stay focused on the primary. So let's see what he has to say. At sea level, check this out. The horizon is tangent to the sea surface, and at right angles to the vertical. What? But as our height of eye gets higher, the visible horizon dips lower and lower. Oh, we'll get back to that. Th this is the important part. This, the purple part, I just want to get right there. Dip is purely a function of our height of eye. That's it. So he, at least he got one thing right out of this belly laughing monstrosity. We're going to circle back here in a second, but um, that's it. What does purely mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Purely height of eye. Nothing else. It's all it is. You have to account for the height of I. That's it. Period. End of story. Done. Now he thinks that he completely has proven the Earth not being a sphere. He conveniently didn't read the sentence, the higher our I, the bigger amount of this dip angle. But hey, he didn't read the book in the first place. Stating that the fact that the dip correction only deals with the height of I and drawing the conclusion that the horizon doesn't dip at all is a non sequitur of monumental proportions. It's even worse, it just isn't true, as he has demonstrated himself. In his introduction to this train wreck he said this. The only reason why you have to do height of eye correction is because that adjacent line that you're looking to the horizon to and the line that's going up, what, what, that, that is the GP. And the line that's going up to the celestial body, that line, that adjacent line that you're on, is slightly acute, depending on how high you are above the water. That's it. It's slightly acute. And what you have to do is you have to drop your eye line down to sea level. That's all you have to do so you flatten that line out. You get rid of the, the small acute angle. Right? So, oh, that's it. Let me draw a little diagram with this. The adjacent is the line between your eyes and the horizon. And, by the way, this is definitely not the GP. He says that the angle between this line and the line to the star is a little acute, which is true, but has nothing to do with the dip angle. What he should have said was that this line relative to the horizontal has an angle that is slightly acute. He didn't, because then he would have to admit that the horizon lies beneath eye level. He does say it, but in a kind of misty way. What he says here comes down to this. Relative to your eye height, the horizon has dropped, or, in navigation terminology, dipped. So. He is contradicting himself big time. I edited out a long discussion about the publication date of the book. QE doesn't know it because he hasn't read the book, but it's an edition from 1991. Then QE brings the discussion back to the main point, the dip. Purely? That's what that means. It's without insult from anything else. It's nice to see that he says, purely, that is what that means. It is without insult from anything else. 
and we know he's a specialist in insults, be it insults at the level of a six-year-old. Then he moves on with a part of a book he doesn't even know the title of. That this is this is also. I'll have to get the source for this. This came from 10th. So, he didn't read this book either. It's not that important, but it's from Tables from American Practical Navigator by Bowditch, 1962. This book contains, among others, these illustrations. QE, of course, never saw these because, well, because he hasn't read the book. But if he had, he would no doubt have ignored it. Uh, I want to direct everyone's attention down here to Dip. Listen closely. Dip in minutes of arc is approximately equal to the square root of the height of the eye in feet. Wonder where we heard that before. The correction applies to all observations in which the horizon is used as the horizontal reference. It is always a minus correction. If 0.1 degree accuracy is used, no dip correction is needed for a lifeboat heights of eye. Now, that's it. It's all over. Those two kill it. It's height of eye. That's all it is. And this shows you right now, if you're on a lifeboat, you don't even need it. If you're in a, a rubber ducky life preserver, that's even closer to sea level. So you most assuredly ain't going to need it. And if that's purely a function of the height of eye, then it doesn't have anything to do with anything else other than the height above sea level. So he proclaims that it's all over because the text says that you can ignore dip correction if you're at lifeboat's height of eye. He adds to it that dip correction only has to do with the height above sea level. So he makes the same logical fallacy all over again. Dip correction is given in minutes of arc, that is an angle, an angle to the horizon relative to the horizontal. When you are sitting in a lifeboat that close to sea level, the horizontal and the line of sight to the horizon practically coincide, both on a flat earth and on a spherical earth. But it's even worse. He proudly quotes the formula, dip in minutes of arc is approximately equal to the square root of the height of I in feet. This is a rounded off number, in fact it is 0.97 times the square root of the height of I in feet. But where does that formula come from? How was it derived? Let me show you. In this diagram, the dip, dip correction alpha is equal to the angle beta. So you can calculate this angle beta if you presume that the distance to the horizon along the line of sight is the same as the distance along the surface of the earth. This is true for heights of eye that are relatively small. Then beta is equal to open bracket d, the distance to the horizon, divided by 2 times pi times the radius of the earth r close bracket times 360 times 60 minutes of arc. D can be expressed as 1.22459 times the square root of h. By the way, this formula also is based on r, the radius of the earth. When you work that through, you get 0.9768936 times the square root of h. This outcome is in minutes of arc. I don't know of any further derivation of the 0.97 times the square root of h formula that doesn't use r as its basis. So quantum eraser uses a formula based on the radius of the earth to demonstrate that the earth is flat without even realizing it. He also doesn't realize that with the dip correction angle, you can calculate the distance to the horizon. I made these calculations both for a flat earth and for a spherical earth. And lo and behold, the distances to the horizon on a flat earth all are smaller than those on a spherical earth. And, by the way, both the formula for the dip angle and for the distance to the horizon are correct. 
as can be seen when you compare the outcome with the data from the nautical almanac. By accepting the formulas given in the books he cited himself, he also debunked his whole black swan nonsense in one single swoop. Can we call Quantum Eraser a clown? A nincompoop? A stupido? I think we can.